Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the white gloves. This is a slightly different mailbag. We will not need this Swiss Army knife because I unpackaged already everything. This is more productive because we can go on faster. The second new thing is that I have now really protective gloves which are for ESD reasons. The first products are amplifiers with the LM386. These are mono audio amplifiers and you need two if you want to do stereo. Here is the input and here is the output. You can drive them with 5 volts up to 12 volts so they fit quite well in the Arduino world. And you will see later where I think I can use them. Next. Here we have a WT588D voice module. You can load here a few MP3 files and then you can remotely control it from the Arduino or from the ESP. So your microcontroller should get voice. And now you know also why I ordered these amplifiers. If I have this module here plus a small amplifier I can drive a loudspeaker. You might see one project using this device here. It's uh, from Banggood. Next, here you have CNY70 reflective optical sensors. You might know these kind of sensors here where you basically can detect something which comes in between. You have a re an emitting and a receiving diode and basically if you break the ray here then you get an alarm. The same thing with this one here. Slightly different but the same principle. Now this CNY70 is like that. If you can co come close to it it will give a contact. This is very handy if you have uh, some uh, approaching things and you want to see whether something is here or something is not here. Or sometimes also line following devices also use these kind of sensors. If you look very close you see there is a emitting and a receiving diode or a receiving transistor built into one device with four different pins. Next. We all know these ultrasonic distance sensors from our Arduino project. They come in three different varieties, the SR04, the US015 and the SRF05. They have two big disadvantages. One is they are quite clumsy and two they are not waterproof. Because I transport my bicycle behind my car I wanted to have a waterproof distance sensor to avoid any accident. This is why I ordered these kind of ultrasonic sensors. They are waterproof, have only two pins, but at the end I did not find out how to use them. I did not find any information. Maybe one of the subscribers or the viewers have uh, information, but I did not find information about them. So I had to give up on them. But fortunately, one of my viewers gave me a link to this ultrasonic distance sensor. It is probably one of these inside here, but I don't know. But at least it's waterproof and it's small and can be mounted into uh, my bicycle holder. And here the electronics are somewhere else. I have a 2 meter cable in between. I probably need more than one of these, probably two or three to avoid accidents, but at least I give it a try first with one and then I will order the others if necessary. They have the same pins so I assume that we can also drive them the same way as normal ultrasonic distance sensors. Next, for haptic feedback, 
I purchased these small vibration generators. They are really small and they resemble uh, to the ones in our smartphones. So let's quickly try how they behave. I have here one and if I connect up to 3 volt they start to shake. And you feel them quite well. So if you mount them somewhere on your device you get haptic feedback and it is not very loud like a buzzer. Sometimes buzzers do, uh, do not fit because they are too loud so this haptic sensor is perfect exactly as if you are in a meeting and you mute your mobile phone. Next, we all love our Arduinos but I thought I want to have it a little bit nicer looking so I purchased an acrylic enclosure. It is very cheap and very nice. All the pins are accessible here. Also the different plugs. Everything is accessible but it's somehow nicer looking. The same thing applies to my Uno. So I have now two nice looking Arduinos. They also stand better on your table they don't move easy, as easy as a normal Arduino without uh, an enclosure. Next, because I was not sure whether my soldering iron has the right temperature I purchased this FG100 clone. It is a very simple device. It has an on off button. It shows you the temperature and here you have an element where you can measure the temperature of your soldering iron. Now I use my very very old Weller soldering iron. It's about 40 years old and it has no variable temperature. It has just one fixed temperature of about 330 degrees if I remember right. Let's check. I just put the soldering iron here on this junction and wait for a moment. It is very fast reacting and we have about 330 degrees. Now let's try the new one or the more modern one, the IUV 968 also on 330 degrees and here we see it's a little bit high now it's not easy to change this but 10 degrees is okay for me 10 degrees uh, difference is okay for me but this kind of FG100 even if they are quite cheap probably ten dollars or so they are quite accurate so if you are interested in the temperature of your soldering iron then this is a good solution and in addition you get 10 new sensors because you have to change them from time to time. You all know that I, lo I love to play around with this ESP8266 but they have one disadvantage. They have pin distance of only 2 millimeters. So they do not fit in the normal breadboards and so on and also we cannot use these pin headers we use for our Arduino projects. This is why I purchased a few pin headers with two millimeters distance so now I can build a nice module and of course I need also the female part so basically it's now easy and I can use them now as our Arduino shields or whatever. Very simple concept but you just need pin headers male and female with two millimeters distance and of course you have to have your custom made PCB but this is not a big problem these days. Next one this is a nice new device it is called Sonoff and it has an input and output and in between it has 
an ESP8266 plus a relay. So you can switch on and off 110 or 220 volt or 240 volt. These Sonoffs come with some custom made firmware which you can use with your iPhone but of course I do not use this one. I will program my own with all my things I learned with over the air update and so on with timer and so on and I have something in mind for winter season so stay tuned. The whole thing costs about seven dollars which is ridiculous cheap if you compare it if you have to have an ESP8266 plus a relay and it is also in a nice enclosure so it's not dangerous to connect mains here. Next one just today I got a real big package from Texas Instrument with something educational then a simple link and in addition a launch pad. So what the hell is this? For example this one has lots of sensors and displays, a joystick, a display, push buttons, a buzzer, a microphone and many other sensors. And this one here is the MSP mainboard with a processor and the booster packs can be attached to this one. Maybe you already heard of MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, taught by the best university professors in the world and all free of charge if you do not need a certification. Two main platforms exist for these MOOCs, EDX and Coursera. The quality of the courses is usually very high and I encourage everybody to try it. Who had the chance to study at Stanford or at the MIT? So I will try the course Real-Time Bluetooth Networks because it uses RTOS and Bluetooth, both topics on my to learn list. And this is why I had to purchase these booster packs and launch pads. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.